Hi, this is Craig and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. This episode you're about to see is gonna be the last sailing episode of the 2018 sailing season. You're gonna notice in the episode we mentioned we have one more weekend off to go sailing. We did go sailing, it was sunny, it was beautiful, and we have enough footage to make a great episode. Unfortunately, we must have gotten lazy because we went to Navy Bay again, which is the one you saw two episodes ago. So I'm thinking even though there's some good banter and some fun in that episode or what would have been an episode, I don't think I'm gonna do it just because it's of a place we just went to. I don't wanna bore you guys. So assuming you, you know, comment below if you want that changed and you want an episode, but otherwise I'm gonna go on to the gear review. The gear reviews I'm gonna do because this is the gear I'm gonna take with me on that 10,000 nautical mile sailing voyage. And I gotta learn all this gear and I wanna tell you why I bought it. One of the things is, I'll start off with, so I just got the Weeble Lab, which is a much smaller travel friendly gimbal. And I say travel friendly for a reason. You're gonna see in this episode, that you're about to see that I use this in it. When I go to shore, I'm using the Crane 2 gimbal for my uh, stable shots. As you can see, this thing is a beast, and it's A, hard to get in and out of a dinghy without dropping this thing. B, it's heavy, so your back gets tired if you film a long time with it. You tend to keep switching hands so that you, your shoulder doesn't get sore. And uh, the other thing is, if you want to put like a, um, a monitor here, this is what these dual handles are good for, they're an option. But when you walk into town or say, hey, let's go check out the coffee shop and you walk in with this, it's a little intimidating. People stop and look at you and think, why is there a professional film crew in my coffee shop? So I want something A, lighter when I go on that big long sailing voyage and something a little less intimidating. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this is actually about to be sold. There's a guy coming in literally five minutes to come buy this thing. So yeah, that'll be out of my life momentarily. Not that I hated it. It's a very good gimbal, but I'm gonna go on to that. Of course, I have the brand new camera, the a7 III, that I'm really, really liking. I've got a bunch of new lenses, and I've got these wireless lavalier mics I probably should be using because this room echoes like hell. But yeah, I just haven't gotten used to the settings and all that yet. So those are the episodes you're gonna see after this, is me showing you all this new gear once I get used to using it and telling you why I like it, why I think it should improve the channel. So hopefully you're looking forward to that. Subscribe so you don't miss those episodes. And uh, I wanna say thanks to uh, Chase. He helped edit on this, he did the rough cut and then I did the polish up, and it's working out great. So thanks to Chase, and without any further ado, check out the episode. Ciao for now. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello. I'm Craig, and this is Janice. Hello again. And we are part of Cruising Off Duty. We are the ones that are sailing around the Thousand Islands, showing you all the beauty that there is. And today we are heading to? Sugar Island. Sugar Island, <laughs> she said that like she wasn't sure. We are heading to Sugar Island, an island we went to once before, but we didn't film that weekend. We didn't bring our camera. We took a weekend off. Mostly because there's just so much footage I haven't gotten around to editing. We thought, why add more onto that? Let's just relax. And she got to use her stand-up paddleboard and a bunch of other things and we checked out the island. And we want to go back. And this time we're going to take you with us. It's beautiful again. Um, this is unfortunately our second last weekend mm. of the year. It is actually September right Scary. now. We have only one more weekend to sail in September and then it's the boat show and then it's all out. So Yeah. Summer's gone by really quickly, so, but we can't complain. We have had the most beautiful, I'll just turn it around, most beautiful weather pretty much the entire summer. This has been the best summer in a long time compared to last yes, summer, which was the worst summer much. ever. So, so we have been really happy and it feels longer than it did last year. But she is right. This is our second last weekend on the boat and then we're putting this, this girl away. So that's sad, but Let's have your times. Let's go check out Sugar Island. Okay, see you there. Bye. Okay, before we pull away from the dock, I just wanted to show you that we have this brand new, fully completed now, Dodger Bimini combo. Thanks to Ray for, from Ray Can. He's the guy who built it for us. He's not paying us to say that. We, uh, we paid full price, but uh, he did an amazing job, so I want to do a shout out for him. Awesome. You might have seen a previous episode where we had our friend on board, and it was probably 80% done, but he's finally completed everything, including this grab rail, which wasn't there before. So when Janice would come from the bow on a bouncy thing after putting up the fenders and, you know, or anchoring or de-anchoring you know, de or whatever, we would come back here and sometimes there wasn't anything to grab here. So if you started to fall off balance, you would end up leaning on the, on the dodger, which of course is never a good thing. So now we've got these nice grab rails. So you can grab on this for ducking in here. So it's a big improvement, especially now that it's September. I mean, if we weren't going to the boat show and eating up an entire long weekend that we had ready for, would have been ready for the boat, we are going to be at the boat show so we won't. But if you're ever sailing in October here in Canada, it can be pretty chilly. So having a Dodger like this that you can get behind and have it block the wind definitely makes it feel a lot warmer. I've never had one on this boat ever. We've only ever had a Bimini, which is this part up here. That's what we've had before. So 
this is a huge improvement for me. Oh, and also, even if it's warm, if it's raining, especially if you're going into the wind, the rain just comes straight in at an angle and soaks you. And Janice always runs away and leaves me alone. So now she can spend some time out in the cockpit with me when it's raining. Here we are, we made it to Hay Island instead of Sugar Island because when we looked at the wind guru, the wind's actually gonna come out of the northeast and Sugar Island has the anchorage on the opposite side. Wouldn't have been very helpful. And tonight is supposed to get to uh, 14 to 26 knots of wind. So uh, yeah, we decided to change the plan was in order, but we had a little bit of a hard time getting anchored, didn't we Janice? Four times. Yeah, we had to drop the anchor four times. It's very weedy. It's and very unusual for us. You sort of see the weeds over there. It's very weedy at the bottom here, very thick weeds, so the anchor wouldn't catch completely, and then we'd pull it up, and it was just one big ball if it, of weeds. If it didn't catch in the first five seconds, then forget yeah. it. It's, then it's mowed a bunch of grass, and yeah. it never will catch, so you have to start it all over. It either has to catch right away, or you'll start dragging, dragging, dragging. So since we're expecting a pretty good blow overnight, we want to make sure we were good and set. So on the fourth try, I think... I think we got it in. So Oops, we'll check it out. We got Navionics turned on with a little we'll point on out. it. So it'll show us if we start dragging, we'll be able to see where the point was when we started. And we'll know before we go to bed whether we're dragging or not. So all good. But for now, it is a super calm day. Sun is just about to set. And you can see like there's not a ripple from the wind. Beautiful area. And a loon. Okay, we are having a beautiful night anchored here in Hay Island. You can, I don't know if you can hear it, but there's some sort of concert going on. On the other side of Hay Island is the town of Gananoque, and there must be something going on, but this camera makes it look like it's actually bright out, but it's really, really actually very dark. <laughs> Janice is We can over. barely see each other. Yeah, we can barely see each other. She's, I only Off see her phone. from the glow of her phone as she reads, <laughs> as she reads the news. Yeah. She's enjoying the Tesla news of him smoking pot on Joe Rogan's podcast and getting in big caca, so <laughs> funny stuff. Anyways, that's what she's watching on her phone, and then we're going to watch a movie or a TV show on our iPad and yeah, then go to bed. I guess so. The plan for tomorrow, though, is we're going to get the dinghy, we're going to go explore a bunch of islands. Since we couldn't anchor at Sugar Island, we want to go over in the dinghy because we want to go walk around on it. There's some trails and stuff and film that, so we'll bring you along with us. Good afternoon. We had a bit of a late start because we were goofed off. Well, we didn't sleep much, or he yeah, didn't, anyways. Yeah. It was windy as hell. We had last to get night. up every once in a while. Yeah, and my little kind of Navionic set, so it would say where we were anchored. And every hour or two, I'd hear the wind howling, and I'd get up to check to make sure we weren't dragging, because we don't have a lot of room for error. We're right beside this island, and then this island is rock, and then this island over here is rock. And so, if you start dragging, you better be aware, or you're gonna hit, hit an island. So uh, yeah, and then it was cold. Yeah. Pretty cold and windy this morning. So we uh, kind of lazed around we inside the boat. Uh, had a big breakfast yeah, awesome. and then took a nap. Yeah, very yummy breakfast. And then just sort of napped and goofed off. But I want to fly my drone because we're going to move from here beside Hay Island to where we originally said we were going, which is uh, Sugar Island. Sugar Island. We're going to find a little, see if we can anchor on the opposite side. We didn't go last night because the wind was in the wrong direction. But I think I found a tiny little space on the other side of the island that'll be able to anchor. So we'll try. So anyways, drone flight before we leave and then uh, on to Sugar Island.
Okay, we are heading out. Unfortunately, there's a Sasquatch of weeds again on their anchor, so poor Janice who's up there with that pole trying to get it off the anchor before we get it up on deck. And since I often have to like lift the anchor, drop it, lift the anchor, drop it to get all the muck off, we're not really moving much. Just enough to not drift back into the island behind us. A lot of weeds this year, a lot of weeds. It's been a hot summer, that's probably why. Navionix is having us go through a very narrow little passage which has identifiable rocks obviously by this rock buoy. These kayakers are waiting for us. Show the kayakers. We're, we're blocking traffic. These guys wanted to cross on their way. <laughs> Good afternoon. We made it to Sugar Island. Now not the anchorage we were really hoping to get. We're in this little bay that is not officially an anchorage beside Sugar Island. The anchorage we wanted is just around this rock peninsula. There's another little inlet bay, which is the right depth to be anchoring. And so it's marked as an anchorage. This one's not marked as an anchorage, but the other one was taken by three power boats. And so there's just no room for us to anchor there. So we decided to try this. Now on Navionics, I know why they don't call it an anchorage. Over there, it's really shallow, quite a ways out, like two, three feet deep. So too shallow for us. And then it drops off to maybe 10, 11 feet, but it's a really thin shelf. So you gotta hit that anchor perfectly on that shelf, which we didn't do. And then when we backed up on it, our anchor probably ended up out here where it's deeper. I think we're probably anchored in like 22 to 25 feet of water, which means we have to put out more scope. You know, so instead of putting out 50 feet, we might put out 75, I think we put out 80. Now the thing is with the current, and the eddies around here, even though the wind's gonna come from behind us, that's why we wanted to anchor on this side of Sugar Island. The eddies and the current are kind of pushing us, so our butt of our boat is sort of aiming towards the island, which is not really optimal. So we gotta kind of watch it for a bit, make sure we don't swing into the shallows, because once you do, you can tell the island is made of rock. So when you hit the, hit the shallow area, you're not gonna hit mud, you're probably gonna hit rock, so. We'll watch it for a while before we go to shore, but we're definitely going to go to shore and uh, we'll take you with us. Now you'll see some of these structures on the land. They're like, they're not really houses or anything like you can sleep in because there's no roof, as you can see on any of them. It's just like, I don't know why they, they made a roof with no shingles or no roof, no plywood, but anyways. So I, I guess that they'd be more like um, decks. And we found out this island had a sign on the other side that said American Canoe Club. So I guess the American Canoe Club owns this island I'm assuming but we were here once before and nobody was on it so I don't know what's going on with this island but anyways we won't disturb anything but we'll walk around and uh, show you the island maybe a few of these little huts decks I don't know what you call them you'll see them anyways and uh, you'll understand why it doesn't seem like there was a purpose other than somewhere to sit so there you go but a beautiful day as you saw we went through motored right through in here all these many, many islands that we pass. There's just so many, you sort of, after a while, you're like, oh, hum, another island with a house on it. Yeah, yeah, seen it before, so. But to many of you, this might be uh, quite picturesque. Okay, it's drone flight number two of the day. We're gonna go check out Sugar Island from the air. And these people seem like they're gonna come in and try and anchor next to us, which is gonna be interesting, since we pretty much have taken up this whole tiny bay. So I told them that there's the rocks. You can kind of see them. I don't know. I can see it with my naked eye. But I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Right about there. There's rocks right under the water and they were going to go head in there and try and anchor. Now I know they're a houseboat and they don't draw a lot, but still. Throw an anchor and now you're going to be banging into the rocks all night while you're sleeping. So I think they're going to try and anchor just on the shoreline here. Like us, they're trying to have the island be a protection against the northeast wind. Janice is back there just uh, maxing and relaxing. Say hi, Janice. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I got the drone out and we're gonna go for flight number two.
Okay, we're in the dinghy and Janice is driving. She's the captain of this little boat because I have to film. And uh, she doesn't know how to use this thing, so she knows how to use the dinghy a bit. And we're gonna go uh, take a tour around uh, Sugar Island. And then we're gonna go on shore when we find somewhere that's not a, like a rock cliff, so which is luck. So we made it to shore, we found a dock on Sugar Island, yeah. uh, the opposite side of our boat. And we're gonna do a little. Uh, yeah, the whole around. shoreline is rock, so we found one dock. Yeah, the one and only. The one and only dock to get on this island, so we'll go check it out. Take a peek. All right. The big group campfire pit outside yeah. of this, I guess, group camp dining area. That'd be a big pit. They big have fire. a. This island belongs to the American Canoe Association, and they have a big uh, group members camp out um, in the middle of the summer where they have organized activities, etc. They have an old water pump, which looks operational. We got to the side of the island where we can see the boat. Let's go down and check it. So we're on the opposite side from our dinghy right now. According to the American Canoe Association website, these uh, camping flat platforms are rentable, and so are all the little cottages on this island, and there's a bunch. And you were saying that they put a tent on, on the canoe? Well, they're camping yeah. platforms, so I guess they set up their tents on this wood. So I thought it was just a dock or deck to sit no. around it, no? And they all have these pumps. Get some water from the river. From the river. Okay, so we're heading back to the boat. We're done our recon tour of Sugar yeah. Island. Lots of campsites, nobody here. Nobody. Not, not one single person on this entire island. Campsites everywhere. Still deserted. <laughs> yeah. It is a weekend too. It's not like we're here midweek. I guess, and it's not near, really that close for any Americans to canoe over here, I guess. That's true, it's an island. We were just talking about Fitzroy Provincial Park back where we, near where we live, would be packed this weekend. Now it's still early enough in September that it's warm-ish, but uh, yeah, they'd be, this would be packed, and this whole island is just awesome. deserted. But, oh well. Being an island makes it a little more difficult to get to. Yeah, there's one of the tour boats. So the tour boats are still, uh, still making business. So. Oh, it's the end of the day, and I'm really glad we took advantage of it. Yeah. We almost decided to just... Goof off all day and yeah. do nothing. We got up, it was cold, it was windy, it was cloudy. We had a super late start. Yeah, so we kind of lazed around the boat. But it just goes to show you, don't give up on the day. Try and get out there and explore. Do something. Because we'd already been at Hay Island, so staying there another day wasn't going to help us. No. And it's a private island with houses, so we really can't go on shore. Yeah. And uh, we really wanted to come here again to Sugar Island because we liked it last time. Yeah. And what a beautiful day it turned into. It had sun. It's gorgeous. It, was, it actually got reasonably warm, although it's way colder than it used to be. Let me just show you the sunset we're going to have. Yeah, so we're just sitting here. Sort of making dinner. You're, yeah. you're boiling so cauliflower. It's... It takes a long time. Okay. So I'm that, gonna barbecue some. Steak. And I'll fire up the barbecue and have some steak. So it's gonna be a great night. So yeah. And then we're gonna... Tonight's gonna be cold though. Six and degrees. With Ooh. So it's good she's boiling stuff down there. Get the inside of the boat warm. Anyways, anyways, the the uh, thing I wanted to say is just take advantage of the day. Don't give up on it just because it's kind of. Eh. Don't sleep till noon. Don't sleep till noon. <laughs> Talk to you later. Okay. So the sun just set. Yeah, it did. We had to come on the bow to see it. It's beautiful, but it's now gone. But Janice made me stand out here for like a minute straight saying, it's not quite gone yet. It's not quite gone yet. And it is freezing out here. I'm in a t-shirt. She prepared, she has a coat. But yeah, tonight's going down to six degrees. So it's going to be brisk. So that means we're going to have to snuggle. We have candles. <laughs> it's not just for romance, it's for heat now. Look at that sky, awesome. Okay, it is Sunday morning and it is a little brisk. A little brisk out here. It's 12 degrees Celsius. I have no idea what that is in Fahrenheit, but it's for you Americans, it's cold. And Jana still wants to go swimming because she wants to wash her hair. And I gotta wash my hair. She likes washing her hair we in the river. Water pressure. Yeah. Hair you get in and I'll show them. No good for hair All right. So it's 12 well, degrees in the air. The water's warm. The water's warmer than the air yeah. for sure. You ready? The water's, the water's like that. Okay, there she is. She's gonna go in. I'm telling you, I'm out here just watching her and I'm cold. Does the water feel warmer than the air? No, but it feels... <laughs> no, then it's not warm. <laughs> I'm already cold out here in the air. Uh. All right, enjoy washing your hair. The only, only reason it's not freezing cold in the back of the boat in the cockpit here is because we have our new Dodger, which blocks the wind. Thank God. 
because until we had that, it was always as soon as it got cold or wet, we stayed down below and we missed out on, you know, enjoying the outdoors whenever it was sort of inclement. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is her hair washing routine. Yeah. All right. I don't I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I had a shower. If you notice my hair is wet. We have a shower. There's no it's reason no for this. For washing the I know, I know. The water pressure is not good enough for her luxurious hair. So that's her plan. I don't do it. <laughs> She's blind. Blind, I tell you, blind. Owie. Owie. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> It's Sunday, it's kind of cloudy, and it's quite a bit chillier than yesterday. But we had intended to dingy around these islands, so we're gonna do it anyway. Like a quick tour. Okay, we are back from our little dinghy. This adventure. Exploration. <laughs> adventure, yeah. Adventure and fiasco at the same time. Yeah. What happens, we got way out there past that island there with the red little, I don't know what you call it, garage water boat garage on the edge we we're out on the other side it's windier over there uh, you probably saw some footage. Reason, it's really windy over there yeah there's a lot of chop and white caps over there and our brand new motor here all of a sudden just conked out on us and you tried to start it like a dozen times oh. as we were being blown away we were being blown further and further away and uh Eventually I tried everything, starting up trying to start it with the choke open, the choke closed. It would work a little bit with the choke open and then it would stall again and then ugh, I tried a million ways. I was pumping more fuel, didn't seem to work. And then eventually we rode, I rode to that island with the garage. I was exhausted by the time I got there. And uh, we kind of got on that island and I tinkered around with that. Finally decided to just use the plunger and just keep plunging fuel through the engine and the, the little button plunger on the engine. I'm guessing there must have been some dirt or some something clogging the fuel line. Enough fuel got pushed through that eventually it, it started and it worked. Yay. And Janice, who was holding onto the boat, was standing on rocks. And once I got it started, I'm like, quick, jump in! I had to like push him away. <laughs> push me off the rocks. And then literally leap into the boat from afar. Yeah. Of course, when all this fiasco is going on, nobody's thinking of grabbing the camera and trying to film it. No, we, busy. No, too busy. No extra hands. Anyway, that was our fiasco for the day. I wish I knew what it was, so I would make sure we don't do it again, but yeah. <laughs> Hopefully just dirt in the line. We don't have a faulty engine, but it'll make me a little leery of long distance. Going downwind. Going, going downwind long ways before you- On a wavy day. Yeah, on a wavy windy day. Cause yeah, rowing into the wind in, in that big fat dinghy is in near there impossible. There were big waves too. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna get this boat ready. And now we know that there's plenty of wind to sail home. So yeah. we'll be able to sail the entire way back. Should be four hours, five hours. Really? Oh. Well, unless we're doing at least five knots. Okay. Yeah gonna be a while. Anyways, we'll take you with us. Hello, we made it home. Sailed the entire way. You did, yeah. Somebody took a nap. I did. I did the dishes. <laughs> she did, but she And then nap. I took a nap. She took it out. But it was a long sail, about five hours or more. But uh, yeah, we are here and we had dinner before we filming this. We barbecued, just date. So we're gonna yeah. pack it up and head home. It's a good weekend, good three day weekend. Yeah, kind of worse than rain. Yeah. It is cold, as you can see, we're wearing fresh. sweatshirts. It was, a bit, it was cloudy all day today, but yeah. it's still better than winter. Yeah, so take advantage of your boat. It's our second last weekend yeah. on the boat. We have one left. I know, sad, because of the Annapolis Boat Show. So if you're going to that, probably you might already see those episodes before you see this one. If you're going to that, hopefully you saw us, said hi, and maybe you'll be on the other episode, because we like to meet viewers. Oh, yeah, so anyways, that's it for this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If so, give it a thumbs up, and... Subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> Good job. That wasn't planned. See All you right. next time. Yeah, bye, bye for now. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that we like to avoid these things, give them the widest berth possible, because... We've learned they will not avoid you. Yeah, go back and check that out if you're curious. We anchor and hoist the sail.